Welcome to Ra Online. In our previous videos, we have looked about the different forms of asphyxia, the classification, and how asphyxia causes death. And we saw in detail about hanging. Now, the next form of asphyxia that we're going to be looking at today is drowning. So, coming to the definition of drowning, it is a form of asphyxial death where the air entry into the lungs is prevented by water or other fluid which obstructs the airways due to the submersion of the mouth and nostril. It is not essential that the whole body has to be submersed. It is only enough if the mouth and nostril are obstructed by submersion into the fluid or water. Now, what causes drowning? The body has a specific gravity of about 1.08. This results in a natural buoyancy of the body. So, when a person is thrown into the uh, water or any other fluid, the buoyancy of the body helps the person to come back to and float over the surface of the water. However, if the person is unable to utilize this natural buoyancy of the body, the person will be drowned. So, inability to utilize the buoyancy of the body is one of the main causes for drowning. Next cause for drowning is exhaustion. When the person gets drowned, that is falls in a water body or any other fluid, he will first go down into the water body or the fluid. In order to escape from drowning, the person tries to come up. This process keeps on repeating till such time the person gets exhausted and the person may drown uh, in the end. Third reason is hypothermia. Sudden drop in the temperature which affects the nerve endings of the body can result in drowning. The last is entrapment in the whirlpool or tidal waves. Now, what is the mechanism behind drowning? So, first the person falls in the water and he will get into the water body. This results the person to sink into the water. That will result in the, due to the natural movement or buoyancy of the body, the person will try to come up and he rises to the surface. This results in a victim to have an effort to breathe or shout for help. That is, he will open his mouth there will be inhalation of air along with a entrapment of water also and there will be deep exhalation as well. This will cause the water and air both to enter into the airways that results in involuntary cough which will result in diminished air reserve and increased specific gravity. And finally, the victim again sinks. So, as we have seen, the person first falls into the water, will sink to the water, will come try to come up into the surface of the water by the limb movement or natural buoyancy which causes him to rise up to the surface. As soon as he comes to the surface, he will try to have an effort to breathe and shout for help. So, when he opens his mouth and the nostrils, there will be inhalation of air along with the water which then goes down into the airways resulting in an involuntary cough because with foreign uh, substances get into the airway. This results in diminished air reserve and increased specific gravity and the victim tries to sink again. This cycle goes on as a vicious cycle where again the body movement will cause the person to rise to the surface. It will cause more engulfment of water along with air. This causes the rising and sinking alternative to go on and on. The passage of air into the respiratory tract with the cough and expiratory effort results in the uh, irritation of the airways where there is excess mucus secretions, especially in the alveolar uh, uh, surfaces which causes the increased secretion of the surfactants. Air, water and mucus is churned up. As a result, you have a fine a shaving lather froth which occupies the respiratory tract. And this acts like a valve which results in allowing air to go out only but not the water to go out. Again, this cycle goes on and on and this fine froth will act like a valve which results in the process to go on till the specific gravity of the body becomes more than that of the water. The victim becomes exhausted and starts to lose the consciousness. Resultant causes the body to sink into the bottom and finally the residual air that is left results in forced into the peripheral air vessels, vesicles resulting in the ballooning of the lungs. So, this vicious cycle is the mechanism behind the person to drown. Coming to the stages of drowning. So, the stages of drowning was initially identified by causing a dog tied to a board to make it to drown and experimental evaluations have given us five stages of drowning. The step one is surprise. As soon as you are thrown into the body, it is quite natural for anybody to be surprised. The surprise results in the individual to be in a state of fear. So, the victim recognizes that he or she is in a state of danger and therefore becomes afraid. The second stage is that of the involuntary breath holding. So, as soon as you are thrown into a water body or a fluid, you will tend to hold your breath so that you do not inhale or take in the water that is there surrounding you. 
So the victim drops below the water line and the body initiates an involuntary breath holding process. Third stage is because of this breath holding, there is lack of oxygen supply to the various organs in the body. This causes a uh, shutdown of uh, the uh, various organisms resulting in the unconsciousness because of the shutdown of the respiratory centers in the brain. Next is hypoxic convulsion. Because of the lack of oxygen, the victims may look that they are convulsing. And finally, death occurs because both the breathing and circulation will stop as a result of the lack of oxygen supply to the vital organs of the body. So these are the five stages of drowning.